indeed my pleasure uh, to be here. I, like the governor uh, that spoke last, wondered when I was invited uh, to give this lecture why I was chosen. Unlike him, by the time I arrived here yesterday, I was yet to understand really why I was chosen. However, this morning, God opened my eyes to show me that he's been giving me ideas about the health sector of which he would want me to share. And I would like us to know that there is a booklet which have encapsulated almost everything that I believe that if we pay attention to, we are not reinventing the wheel. All the other speakers earlier have alluded to the solutions. It is just for us to be dedicated to implement them. Before I go on, I want to stand on existing protocol. We who are in, in the academia, we are usually not very good with protocols. But please forgive me, I won't even dare to start going through the protocols. But, but let me say that you are all very welcome Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, and every other person that is here, the media. I'll go straight into my presentation, which I believe, I hope that we'll be able to appreciate them on the screen. Can we have it on the big, bigger screen as well, so that the, it can be appreciated? The first wealth of a nation is its health. And there is empirical evidence that the health of a nation significantly enhances its economic development, HIV AIDS maternal mortality, under five mortality, malaria, tuberculosis, compounded by non-communicable diseases have undermined development and impoverished many developing nations such as Nigeria. Nonetheless, it has been enunciated that the pursuit of better health should not await an improved economy even though, as we heard earlier, our economy doesn't leave anything wanting that is needed to develop the health sector. It's just that it has not been applied appropriately. Rather, measures to improve health will themselves contribute to economic growth. So I would like us to shift our focus from looking at health as one of those um, facilities that are put into the structure of the country in order to swallow money, but as a contribution to economic growth, health should be viewed as a business. And it's big business, as I'm sure that we know that India has discovered. Not being satisfied with harnessing our dissatisfied patients into India, they have, they have actually uh, gone ahead 
to make a landmark entry into our country, establishing health facilities as they have seen fit, and doing it like at the speed of Hamatan, at the speed of fire during the Hamatan period, and are establishing diagnostic centers all across the country and have already started also establishing hospitals. So this goes to show us that healthcare is indeed a business. And when healthcare is a business, necessarily it doesn't translate to high cost of healthcare. As the same India has proved, in a lot of their facilities, the cost of healthcare is affordable, is accessible, and is determined by the quality of the ambience, as the cost is determined by the quality of the ambience rather than the quality of the healthcare service that is rendered. And that is what we should strive at. And to achieve this, I am sure that the way to do it is all hands on deck, where we have engagement of government, engagement of the people that the health is targeted at, and the people being corporate entities, families, and individuals, all have a stake and a role to play. The way a country finances its healthcare system is a key determinant of the health of its citizenry. And selection of adequate and efficient methods of financing, in addition to organizational delivery structure for health services, is actually essential if a country is to set to achieve its national health objective of providing health for all. So it's not just a matter of um, providing finances, but how these finances are managed and how the management of these finances translates into service uh, to the people. I would like to uh, plead on the organizers to either give me my laptop or to have projected what I can view because I don't have my presentation up here. Now I would like to address barriers to assessing uh, health services. The barriers actually encompass poor management structure and inadequate financing. And these are the two key areas that we have an issue in this country. The poor management and the inadequate financing. For instance, where we have the budget for 2014, uh, apportioning 6% of the budget, of the country's budget to healthcare, Nigeria in Abuja signed to apportion 15% to healthcare. And this, of course, shows that we are still working at a very serious shortfall. Indeed, funnily enough, the budget for 2014 fell short of the budget for 2013. Okay. Thank you very much. And when I change of health services in Nigeria is still pretty much government-centric, in spite of the fact that the local governments have the main responsibility of managing the primary health care, all the three 
volunteers of government and various agencies participate in the management of the primary health care at times resulting in duplication, overlap, and confusion of roles and responsibilities, leaving room for poor budgetary allocation for health care, poor mechanisms in place for financing health care, and misappropriation of funds and budgets for health care. was made manifest when Nigeria scored a, a desperate 187th out of 191 nations in the World Health Organization's report in 2000. And therefore, currently healthcare in Nigeria is financed by a combination of tax revenue, out-of-pocket payments, donor funding, health insurance, social and community. And Nigeria's health expenditure is thus leaves much to 